All right. It's another section that we need to learn how to run, how to become, what to become in the world of audit. Audit regulatory framework is critical component in the world of financial, in the world of management, in the world of planning. So we need to have this critical component as part and parcel of our studies. Remember in our previous discussions, we have looked at the audit concepts, audit assurance services. We have looked at the types of audit, the internal and the external, the opinion which the auditors are supposed to bring forth as they make their final judgment or decision about an organization. So being regulatory framework of audit as one of the clear direction in audit discipline. So we need to understand what is all about regulatory framework of audit. Statutory requirement of audit. What are the statutory, what are the legal requirement of audit? And then number two, we will be looking at the appointment of auditors. How are auditors appointed? Who appoints auditors? Then we'll be looking at the vacation of office. At what point an auditor can leave the office, can be removed from the office? And then rights and duties of auditors. What are the rights and duties of auditors? In other words, when you talk about statutory requirement of audit, we are looking at the two perception or two direction. Number one is the legal requirement. What are the legal requirement of an auditor to become audit? Number two, professional requirement. So there are legal requirement which requires someone somewhere to be in the profession of audit. Number two is the professional requirement. What are the professional requirement for auditors? To become audits. Then in the appointment we will be looking at persons who qualifies to become an auditor and then appointment procedures. What are the appointment procedures? What are we supposed to do in terms of procedures to be followed in the appointment of auditors? And then number three is the vacation of office as part of the regulatory framework of audit. Now, there is removal procedures. How an auditor can be removed from the office? Number two, we have resignation procedures. How can auditor resign from his or her job opportunities? Rights and duties of auditors. What are the rights of an auditor? And what are the duties of an auditor? So these are critical regulatory framework of auditing. Anytime you want to carry out audit, then remi remind yourself or remember it's all about the framework. How is the framework of audit? Now we start with the first one which is the statutory, re statutory requirement. Now in the statutory requirement we have two critical areas to be looking at. Number one is the legal requirement and number two, we have looked at the, we have to look at the professional requirement. Now, what do you mean by legal requirement? It includes companies' ordinance, listing rules, and other relevant legislation. In other words, we are saying, when you are talking about statutory, we are looking at the law. We are looking at the company's ordinance. We are looking at the listing rules. We are looking at the other relevant re legislation. So in other words, for auditors to do what they are supposed to do, there are laws governing their operation, which is actually posted and given in companies' ordinance, which has been listed as rules, which is part and parcel of legislation. A legislation can be put forward by the members of parliament. And these are critical information 
that must be put in place. So when you talk about legal requirement, we are looking at it from companies' ordinance. We are looking at it from listing rules. We are looking at it from other legislation. So number one, let's look at companies' ordinance. Now, what do you mean by companies' ordinance? The company's ordinance require every limited company to have an annual audit after which the auditor must give an opinion on whether the client's financial statement given through and fair view and comply with the relevant legislation. So the work of an auditor is to give a report and that is what we call company's ordinance. They must have an annual meeting and in the very annual meeting which is the annual general meeting for companies, the auditors are required to give a report. Report about what they have found in the process of auditing that particular company. So we need to have in mind that any time, any moment, a company is supposed to be audited, their statutory requirement. And one of them is company's ordinance. Number two, the company's ordinance set out the rights and duties of auditors procedure of appointment resignation and removal of auditors so in the companies in the legislation in the legal requirement we have companies ordinance which sets the rights of auditors the duties of auditors and procedures of appointment resignation and removal of auditors this should be clearly in the legal perspective, in the statutory, in the status. Number three, reasonable skills and care should be exercised by auditors when carrying out an audit assignment. So again, it is very critical component in the legal requirement perspective that any time we talk about legal requirement as far as auditors are concerned, their report, their information, must be well and well presented it must catch it must be according to the rules and regulation governing the preparation and the reporting of the audit number two as part of legal requirement is the listing rule listing rule specify the safeguard procedures which should be carried out to identify conflict of interest and maintain independence. In other words, we are saying the listing rules, are, these are procedures which have been set. It has been identified that when this information are given or brought into perspective, conflict of interest will not be there. But again, independence of auditors shall be maintained. So there are rules which has been listed which will govern the presentation, the preparation, and presentation of audit. Number two, in the legal requirement perspective, remember the first one was legal requirement. Number two is professional requirement. That is part of the statutory. As part of the regulatory mechanism to monitor professional accountants' conduct, HKICPA has issued Hong Kong standard on auditing, practice not, an industry auditing guideline for members to follow in their professional practice. So we have a guideline. If you are a professional, if you have been given position, if you have done your studies, if you have experience, if you have been qualified, as a professional in the accounting field, then you must abide by rules and regulation governing the professional practice. And that is very critical. So in the statutory perspective, we need to have this in mind. In the statutory, statutory means legal, legislation, law. So when you talk about law, what are the laws governing auditors or auditing? So when you are doing audit, remember the laws. Number one, the laws is companies' compliance, legal companies' compliance, the appointment procedures, and then listing, we have rules and regulation, 
And then finally, the professional requirements. What are the professional requirements for you to become an auditor? Now we come to the second one, appointment. So for anybody to be appointed as an auditor, there are critical items that must be clearly given as far as appointment is concerned. So appointment is critical. No one can just appoint himself or herself, but there are procedures to be followed in the appointment of somebody to become an auditor. Personal, person qualified to be appointed as auditors, the requirement for a person qualified to be appointed under the company's ordinance includes A. Person qualified to be appointed under Section 393, Subsection 1 of the company's, uh, of the company's ordinance. A person shall not be appointed as auditor of a company unless... He is qualified to be appointed as auditor under the professional accountant ordinance. So we have professional accountant's ordinance. What it takes for you to become an auditor. B. Person not qualified for appointment as an auditor under section 393 subsection 2 of the company's ordinance. One. An officer or an employee of the company or its subsidiary or holding company. Here we are meaning any officer who has been employed in that company or who has been employed by the subsidiary company should not qualify to become an auditor. That is why we are preventing or protecting personal interests. So here, the company is trying to protect individual interest. Number two, a person who is partner of an employee, of an officer, or employee of a company, or subsidiary and holding company. So any partner, any member, any friend should not become an auditor of that company. Why? Is because, again, we are protecting the company from personal interest.